Well, here we are once again. Allow me to be frank. You know, I'm going through a hectic time right now. I'm trying to get tickets for Army Navy. Uh, uh, going back and forth. Uh, the Army Navy game. I've brought tickets. I might get tickets from somewhere else. And I'm juggling a whole bunch of things right now. But other than that, everything's going well. I just found uh, my bottle opener. Oh, I thought this thing was gone. Look at this. It's been hiding here all along. Look at this. It's got like three months of dust on here. I lost this thing three months ago. Where was it, Frank? On the floor here. In the um in the the gambling cave or the uh corner sort of the uh where we do some uh live watches going on here. This is where Troops does his uh when he when he watches Arsenal lose. Yeah, yeah, no, I've seen a lot of those clips. Uh, I, uh, and, uh, I think troops might uh, strap me down next time. I was watching the first half. Arsenal was leading. They were leading, and then I had to go leave for the Devils game. And uh, right after I leave, uh, they give up two goals and uh, lose to uh, Everton, who was like on an 18-game losing streak. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's one of those losses where... Something is going to get broken if that if that happens to my team. Uh huh. Yeah. No, I bet. Or a shirt or collar is getting ripped all the way through. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. <laughs> like many of your Mets shirts. And um, speaking of the Mets, there's uh, a lot of news. Even though we're in a lockout, we're in day six of the lockout. There's still yeah. Is it, it, there, there's no urgency here. There's nothing going on here. Yeah. It's ridiculous that. Uh, we have this lockout going on, and it's like, can we at least have a meeting or something? I mean, what, what are you doing here? Yeah, we haven't really heard anything about meetings since uh, the lockout was put into effect. And Well, I hear there's no plan for any meetings until at least the, uh, the, after the New Year. So everyone's going on Christmas vacation. The sport is basically stopped. They're not promoting the start. You, you see, this is where... This Major League Baseball is so damn stupid. They're afraid to promote the stars because the prices will drive up the cost. Yet the prices go up naturally, and they don't realize that they're by not promoting the stars, they're not getting their, their bang for the buck. I mean, this business has been going on for thirty years, and it's it's like they rather have the sport the, the not do as well financially because they don't want to promote the stars because they don't want to the to get the the stars even more money. I mean, it, it, it is so mind-numbingly stupid from a mind-numbingly stupid commissioner. How about what MLB.com did, uh, deleting everybody's past work, all mentions of player names, blacking out the players' faces. Um, they refused yeah, to post yeah, the player yeah, content. Yeah, it's a shame. The uh, baseball card, the, the set's going to suck in 2022 without the players' faces. Yeah, I know. It's going to be hard to tell I them. I mean, first, first tops... Has the exclusive right, so any Don Riss or Upper Deck cards, they have to uh, airbrush out the logos. So now they're going to airbrush out the face. Yeah, I just did it's you extremely many major, bad. Did you notice many major leaguers have used uh, that as their avatar? Yeah, no, I know they all did it in response to MLB doing that. And if I was, I, a, I mean, it is it is silly and stupid. It accomplishes nothing. It makes it makes Rob Manfred and uh, the 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 the, uh, the brainiacs. They're a brainiac, brainiac running the sport, and they're gonna run the thing into the ground. Oh yeah, these brainiacs. I mean, it looks it makes them look silly. It makes them look petty. It makes them look stupid. How about what Tony Clark said uh, after Rob Manfred? put out the statement about the lockout. He goes, Tony Clark goes, I wish the effort in these meetings uh, were put in as much as they were to this letter. Do you, uh, do you know Tony Clark has an infamous thing in Mets history? Mm, I can't pinpoint that. What is it? He came to the Mets. Uh, he asked for a number. They gave it to him. And after a week of winning the number, they asked him to change his number 
because he was using someone else's number. Really? Yeah, you know whose number he was using? It was probably a retired player, I'm going to guess, was it? No, not a player. Nope. Was it a retired he manager? This- nope. He was using Mr. Met's number. Oh, double zero. Yeah. Oh, my and God. And they asked him to take it off because Mr. Met was using double zero. They didn't want to have both. So he had, like, I think he changed, like, 33. He wasn't a Met that long. But he actually used double zero. And it was everyone was joking about, oh, you're using Mr. Met's number. How'd they not notice? Like, how'd they just give him the Mr. Met's number and not realize? Have you ever heard of the Calvin Torvey story? No. Can't say I have. All right. Joan Payson's favorite player was Willie Mays. Mm. She wanted, she offered the Giants $2 million for Willie Mays when the Mets were founded. And when he, like, oh, I, yeah, 1962. It was like his, she was like his wife. She was, she wanted him all the time. And then finally, he, the Mets got him 72. And when he retired, Joan Payson basically said, we're going to retire your number. She dies. The team gets sold. And nobody ever retires the number. But the number's never issued. Until 1989, or was it maybe 1990? It, it was 99 with Ricky Henderson, I believe. No, 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 no. That's something different. 1990 or 1989, they call up this guy, this scrub from the minors named Kelvin Torvey. Mm. And uh, he asked for 24. They gave it to him. And he had like a good two or three games where he 24. And the people are saying, no, that's William Mays' number. You can't give him William Mays' number. <laughs> so eventually they, they, they corrected it. Kelvin Torvey went to number 39 and sucked. Disappeared, never was heard from again. And the Mets have issued 24 twice since then. Yeah. Robbie Cano. 24 to Ricky Henderson and Robinson Cano. Yeah. Now, granted, these are good. I mean, once the steroid dam breaks, Cano might still get in the Hall of Fame. You think? And I... Yeah, and I predicted the and I predict the steroid damn break could uh, could happen this year. Well, it should happen with Barry Bonds first, and Roger Clemens. First off, there's already steroid users in the Hall of Fame. We just don't know who they are. Yeah, of course. And uh, secondly, Ortiz used David Ortiz used, and if he doesn't get in the Hall of Fame this year, that will be insane. Yeah, and that's probably the reason why they're going to use, you know, the excuse to keep him out. Well, well I, I hope it's just the opposite. I hope finally they, they realize that, okay, this was an error in which everyone used steroids. You know, there was an error in which every pitcher used a spitball. Are we throwing them out of the Hall of Fame? No, we're not. You know, pitchers used to be able to take the ball and literally dunk it in water. Go out on the mound and use that ball to pitch. They called it the dead ball era. Uh-huh. You know? And nobody, it, 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 it just is what it was. The steroid era is what it is. It was, it was rampant. Not everyone used steroids, but it was rampant. It was to the point where so many people were cheating it almost was an even the playing field with people using steroids. Do we have Mikey yet? Um, I'm sending you his username right now. But, yeah, Frank, um, you have a good point there because uh, you have a good point because um, HGH was legal in MLB until 2004, I believe, they, they banned it. I mean, yeah, I mean, we can't do anything. Uh, uh, I didn't see it. Send it on the uh, send it on the uh, other chat. In the Twitter, Twitter chat. Okay. And for yeah. all those listening, we're trying to add our social media coordinator, Mikey Betts, who will be joining us each week now on the show. Um, obviously, Mikey and Frank have a long history together of 
Frank, of course, going on the Mikey Betts podcast and singing his intro, which is a very, uh, I'd say a very good uh, tune. One of Frank's best jingles, in my opinion. Um, all right, let me. But yeah, the steroid era, like they try to keep Piazza out too because of it. Um, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not gonna. Uh, I if he used it, he used it. He didn't, he didn't. I, I don't know if he used it or not. I'm not gonna say he didn't use it for sure, and I'm not gonna say he used it for sure. Yeah, I but- mean, the the Mitchell report was just inherently unfair. None of the Red Sox ever got out out it. I know until later. And you know, uh, Senator Mitchell was a uh, is a minority owner for the uh, Red Sox. Yep. Yeah. So, so I wonder why. Let me see. Yeah. No. You you do wonder why. Um. You know they didn't get out, but uh, there's your answer right there. And it did take a couple years uh, later and- for. It to come out that David Ortiz and uh, and Manny Ramirez were both, um, you know, on that list. And Manny was also suspended during uh, the 2009 season where he had the resurgence with the Dodgers. And, you know, remember, Frank, the Mets, uh, the Mets fans were going outside SNY's studio in, in Manhattan uh, chanting for Manny Ramirez during the 2009 offseason. And uh, fortunately, they didn't get him because he got suspended, I believe, in late May of the 2009 season with the Dodgers. It was his second season. It was going to be his first full season with the Dodgers, and then he got hit with the PED ban. I mean, even even people who have now been banned. You know, the NFL doesn't uh, – the Baseball Hall of Fame act is so fucking ridiculous. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, requirements for being in the Baseball Hall of Fame. A great baseball player, and your shit can't stink. Yeah, that's true. But uh, in the meantime, Frank, would you like to introduce our guest and, uh, of course, now one of our co-hosts and social media coordinator? Would you like to introduce okay, him to uh, the listeners? Well, this is uh, this is Mikey Betts. Um, he's uh, going to be joining us. He's done some of our social media recently. He has his own podcast out there in Chicagoland, uh, a betting uh, podcast. Uh, where he speaks about, uh, talks about betting, and he talks about different things. Uh, of course, uh, uh, we had the infamous episode with uh, Vito from The Sopranos. <laughs> uh, fuck that guy. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, guys. What's up, Frank? Thank you for uh, having me on. What's up, everybody? What's up, Pat? Um, appreciate up? it. And, uh, yeah, dude, um, you guys can find me at Real Mikey Bets. It's always a pleasure on at Frank the Tank Pod, uh, just handling the social there. And I look forward to it. It's going to be fun. But yeah, speaking of that, uh, that Sopranos episode or that that podcast with Vito from Sopranos, top. It was probably the worst interview of all time. So I was actually talking about this recently. Um, my girlfriend's watching Sopranos for the first time all the way through, and mm-hmm. we just got to the part where they find out about Vito, you know, being gay. And I had mentioned, I said, I'm pretty sure Frank and Mikey did a podcast had Vito on as a guest and Frank and Vito were on together as guests, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah. I know I did remember you guys mentioning that it didn't go well. So uh, let's, let me hear about the details. I'm sure everyone's dying to know uh, what happened. But there. before we go to the details, we need to talk about something else. That's right. And that's America's first and original hot dog company. You know, Charles Feltman invented the hot dog. And today, Feltman's is a veteran-owned business, which was revived in 2015 by two Brooklyn brothers, Joe Quinn, a former Army captain, and his brother, Michael, who did this in honor of their brother, Jimmy, who was killed in the 9-11 attacks. You know, when a team of military veterans that have collectively served over 110 months in combat, Feltman's is now one of the fastest-growing natural food companies in the United States. they 100%. Beef all natural hot dogs are available for purchase online at Feltman's.us and at Whole Foods. Not to mention, they ship super fast and it will be the perfect addition to your family's next cookout. So remember to use promo code FRANK to receive 10% off all Feltman's products. That includes the bratwurst uh, and the uh, 
the bacon at Feltman's.us. That's the promo code Frank for 10% off all items at Feltman's.us. And allow me to be frank, as always, presents you by Feltman's Go Army Beat Navy. That's right. And uh, actually, with the holiday season approaching, I guess we're in the midst of it right now. Um, Obviously, pigs in the blanket are always a hot commodity at every holiday party. So you could purchase Feltman's. Pigs in the blanket. Pigs in the blanket. Pigs in the blanket. Pigs in the blanket. Do ba do. Get Feltman's for your pigs in the blanket. Do ba do. That's a good jingle that I wasn't expecting to, uh, Love it. to draw out of you. There you go, Frank. Um, but yeah, that that sounds a good idea. And chopping them up and putting them in, uh, you know, homemade biscuits or croissants would be good. Um, but moving on, I would love to hear what happened between Frank Vito and Mikey. So if you guys uh, wouldn't mind rolling into that, I would love to. I'm dying to hear actually to find out what happened. Well, well, first of all. So we had we had Vito on and I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to ask Frank if he wants to hop on too and just interview him because he's from New Jersey. And Sopranos takes place in New Jersey and it'll be a good interview. It'll be fun. And I'm telling you, man, this man just was not ready to do an interview at all. Or he just was not in any mood to do it. Um, Uh, And and then he was like, I don't like gambling. And the name of the show he's on is called Mike. (laughs) Yes. Yes. That's the number one thing. Right. So. Uh, a little background for people who don't listen to my show, um, which is probably a shitload of people that don't listen to my show. Um, it's a show about betting, but it's also about bullshit. And we just talk about just random things, sports, this and that. So we had him on just to talk about Sopranos and to see what life's about and like how he liked that role. First thing I say, hey, it's a pleasure to have you. He goes, OK. And I'm like, dude, come on. Is this how it's going to be for the next 30 minutes? So he was on first. We were trying to talk to him, and then uh, Frank logged in a little bit later, but his mic was messed up, so he couldn't hear anything. And uh, Joe was just getting – he was just getting all flustered, all pissed off, and everything was just the coldest answer. Hey, so what do you think about Sopranos? I don't know. Hey, who do you think died? Uh, nobody really died. Uh, it, it was just – it it was a plethora of – uh, what, what, what was what was it? Uh, I talked about that. I remember that uh, when the Giants went to uh, Super Bowl Forty Two, he was on the news talking about how he dyed his hair, his dog's hair blue. Yeah, but that dog's dead now. Yeah, yeah, dude. Just always like <laughs> such a fucking such a Debbie Downer. And um, <laughs> I, I mean, it was it was like uh, then, then I said at the uh, the uh, the last scene of the Sopranos. So, oh no, Tony didn't die. Tony didn't die. They're not it's Columbia. Just... Like what? What are you saying? Don't say that on my podcast. First of all, and then second of all, he's he's just very negative attitude. And then he tried to say that he made up the role that he was going to play a gay character. Because I was like, hey, how did that, how did you feel like? How did you feel playing a gay character? Like, did your buddy say anything, this and that, you know, back in the day with that, with that, um, just that kind of energy back then? He goes, did you do your research, Mikey? Uh, I did it myself. I'm the one who made that up, which come to find out later, that's not true. He didn't make that up. Uh, it was based off a previous character or pr- a previous person in the just some like old mafia guy that actually was gay or something. But he mm-hmm. said he made it up, and I'm like, dude, this guy is just the worst. Human. It was a good. It was a, It was. It was, and it was one of the best storylines of the whole series. Is yeah. Is, is just because you know Tony didn't really want to kill him. No, he was the best earner. Best earner. Yeah, and uh, and it was like, uh, but but it was just like just like such a, a dilemma for everyone. Because you had people like uh, Paulie who was just like couldn't believe it and was upset and <laughs> the best you had uh go ahead frank sorry and then because he was and because his wife was related to phil phil was like this guy's got to you pay in the most uh, damaging way possible yeah yeah he said he disgraced him he disgraced the wife their entire family, the kids, everybody. So uh, Phil was really up Tony's ass, of course. I was just watching uh, the Johnny Cakes episode where he uh, he starts the relationship with the diner owner slash firefighter. 
and that's like an all-time episode. But it's a shame to hear that, you know, he was cold like that and sounded pretty condescending, honestly. So, um, yeah, I don't know how you guys – how you toughed it out through that interview. I mean, that's, that's something I probably would have cut short. <laughs> One of the worst parts was when uh, Frank was like, yeah, you know, I'm from Bellevue. I'm from the area where you guys recorded. And then he named, like, a hot dog place. And he was like, yeah, you, or I was at the restaurant where you guys whacked. What's his face? And he goes, oh, all right. Just like no, My no God. feedback or, oh, haha, that's cool. Like, that's awesome. Like, n- no, none of that. And then so on my show, I now ask anybody that's from New York and New Jersey questions about, hey, do you guys have you guys ever came in an encounter with uh, Joe Ganascoli, a.k.a. Vito? And people are like, yeah, dude, he sells his merchandise. He's outside. I guess he like sits outside of a truck in New York and like sells his merchandise for like 40 bucks overpriced and he'll like sign it and take pictures with people. So people will go and take pictures with the guy and he'll be like, "Okay, that's twenty five dollars. Oh my god! You know, I met I I actually met Furio a couple of weeks ago. Oh wow! Where? I was at a pizza place, uh, Calabria's in uh, Livingston. That's random. And what'd you say to him? Uh, actually, the pizza place arranged me to talk to him and uh, took a picture with him. Oh no way! Did he know who you were? Uh, he knew Dave. He knew Dave. Okay. How was he as a guy? He was all right. I didn't bother him too much. So I basically, whatever the pizza place brought me over there. He was having pizza. I was having pizza. Everyone's having pizza. Of course. That's what you're there for. By the way, it's the same pizza place. It's the same pizza place I met. uh, I sort of met Patrick Elias at. I remember that, Frank. Yeah, last year. So, Mikey, uh, I guess you might not have heard this story, but Frank, Frank, what'd you do? You went to go watch soccer, and uh, Patrick Elias was there. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was watching the Euro Cup final. I was also listening to the Mets, and I didn't realize who was sitting next to me until the next day when he posted on his Instagram, and I see the back of my head. Meanwhile, his dog is under my chair <laughs> the whole time. And someone introduced Frank to Patrick Elias, but they didn't say who it was. And Frank was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, nice to meet you. They said, like, oh, Frank loves the Devils. And Frank just goes, oh, nice to meet you. Like, not asking who it was or realizing or anybody telling him. And the next day, he was, like, kicking himself hard well, once he found uh, out. I can I don't blame Frank because you know how many people – we went to the Devils game, and everybody and their mother comes up to the guy, yeah. like – you know what I'm saying? So he probably sees everybody every day and he's just like, hey, how you doing? Everyone wants to take a picture. Everyone wants to shake his hand. So Frank is probably bigger than him now. Who knows? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, if it, we're talking recency bias, yeah, I think in out of New Jersey uh, stars right now. Um, you should have seen at the Subway Series, the 4th of July at Yankee Stadium. Uh, Frank couldn't go two feet without 80 people swarming him at once. Asking to take a picture and talk. Speaking, to uh, speaking of the Devils, tonight, uh, that's why we're recording a little early today. Uh, tonight, uh, I'll be at the Devils game. Uh, well, you guys will be seeing this tomorrow, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> and uh, the Devils will be debuting those horrendous dirt jerseys. I'm, uh, I'm actually, I brought some black underwear. If I could find some fabric paint, I think I'm going to paint underwear on it. Do a little so white. <laughs> Oh my god! I mean, uh, I got the uh, they 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 they, uh, they were actually selling the hat that said hat, but that sold out fast. So they got the jersey, the hat, the hat. Why not get the underwear? Why not? Uh, buy some pants. Buy some pants and have them put pants on there. We'll label everything. This well, is Frank- Jersey. It's, this is Jersey. Frank, if you buy the underwear, you know what else you probably need to buy, right? For the holiday season. Oh, yes. You know what? That else would be. Yeah, that isn't true. And, you know, it's good to have um, yourself manscaped down below. This is the holiday season, and you don't know what gift to get as a gift or a sock or something. Well, today's sponsor, Manscaped, has the tools that will guarantee you. This year's stocking stuffer or white elephant competition will be, you'll be the winner. 
You see, Manscaped is the leader in men's below-the-waist grooming, and they have served more than $4 million, $4 million men worldwide. If my math, that's about 8 million balls. So get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with code TANK. You know, Manscaped's best-selling product is the Performance Package 4.0, which is the, at the top of every man's wish list this year. You know, get 20% off at manscaped.com with the promo code TANK. And be the ballsiest gift giver this year with Manscaped. You know, you got the lawnmower. I mean, that just trims everything just down perfectly. And it's perfect, and this is what you want. Get 20% off with free sh- uh, shipping at manscaped.com with the code TANK. And that's where we'll get your Christmas underway. And your jingle bells and your jingle balls will thank you for it. Yes, You're right, they will. Because jingle balls, I, I use that lawn, uh, the lawnmower 4.0. And before I used it, my balls used to look like bat wings. Now, the, ever since I used them, dude, it's the smoothest, like, nicest things I've ever used in, in the world. So, everybody, please make sure you go to manscaped.com. Use that promo code, Frank. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. One question tank. I have to ask you. Promo, is, promo code tank, tank, actually. Yeah, Feltman's is Frank. Uh, Manscaped is Tank. And I have to agree with you, Mikey. I believe um, I'm going to say about the, the lawnmower 4.0. It is very easy to use. And, uh yeah, it's it's probably the only device that you can use to uh, actually trim the hedges and uh, keep everything in tip-top shape because everything else is kind of uh, difficult and dangerous, I guess. Proceed at your own risk of nicking yourself. I thought you were going to say you agree with me that my balls look like bat wings. And I was like, Pat, how do you know that? <laughs> we were about to make a revelation on the show, I guess. <laughs> I have to ask Frank, speaking of balls, why do you have a basketball in your hand right now? Because there was one on his chair before I got there. Oh, okay, cool. That makes sense. I was going to say it's like a Rashid Wallace, uh, Kevin Garnett. They're holding basketballs while, like, recording. Have you guys ever seen that where they're doing an interview? What are you holding the basketball for? Uh, you know? Well, look at this. Look at that. that, that this one that, This one's definitely deflated. Look at that. <laughs> Frank, you ought to be happy that uh, Kyrie might get the plant-based COVID vaccine, apparently, which would uh, mean he could be playing in maybe a month or so, depending on when he gets the first shot. Plant-based. <laughs> oh, God. And meanwhile, James Harden looks like he's uh, come across the Monstars mm-hmm. uh, against the against the Bulls. Uh, what was it, Sunday? Uh, he yes, was sir. like. Uh, he was five for twenty-seven. Oof. Mikey was at Mikey. Weren't you at that game? Uh, that game? No, I was. Uh, not that game. I was in. Where was I? Oh, I was deer hunting this week, so I was not there. But I was at. And. Uh, Go ahead, Frank. And ba- and basically, Harden said after the game, "You could blame me for the loss." And I said, and I uh, I responded, "Yes, I do." Yeah, obviously. But you know what? It was a good win for the Bulls. I know you guys aren't Bulls fans, but you know how I am. Big Bulls fan. I wanted Frank to come out last month to come watch the Nets game with me, but he was uh, in Miami that week. So we'll definitely have yeah. you come to watch a game because I got season two. Yeah, I was going to say, how often do you go to the Bulls games? Um, we bought the 10-game 10, 10 season tickets, uh-huh. uh, not all of them, but I usually go to about 12 to 15 games a year. So how, you how far are, away do you live from uh, from the arena? Um, about 40 minutes away, but I work about 10 minutes away. So right after work, I'll just stop at a bar, chill there until the game starts. So I'm usually sloppy. Uh, but speaking, of, speaking of Chicago, America is going to be tortured by Chicago this week, watching them have to uh, get embarrassed by the uh, Packers. Oof. Frank, why do you bring that up? <laughs> I was having a really good week, you know. I woke up on the right side of the bed, and you have to bring up the Bears Packers this week. You know, uh, the more I see Matt Nagy, the more I, I – it almost is like like a, he's like a, a brother from another mother uh, of uh, Louis Rojas. Just his mannerisms, the way he talks. Imagine if Matt uh, Nagy – co- I'm sorry. Imagine if he coached in New York. He, uh, he would have been fired like four years ago. Dude, well, people Nagy- in Chicago hate him. If he coached, I, 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 I don't understand why the hell he's still like coaching. If, if they lost to the Lions, they should have fired him. But now that the fact that they're playing the Packers and we just got embarrassed last week, this week, 
If we lose to the Packers, which we will, I hate to say it, Nagy needs to lose his job there. Like, they should execute him on the 50 I, 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 I don't understand why he is still the coach here. I, it, and uh, and uh, Andy Dalton, he's always sucked. Handy dandy Dalton. Justin Fields is playing this game, isn't he? He was cleared. Wait, wait, we need to hear the Frank handy dandy salt and salt. Sorry, first. Frank, I didn't mean to cut you off. There go. <laughs> <laughs> He's a dandy Andy Dalton. Handy dandy do or die. When the game is on the line, he'll be sure to throw an interception. That is the Andy dandy way. Absolutely. Pat, what were we saying? I'm sorry. Fields is playing this week, though. I thought I I, th- I thought I saw that he got cleared. Yes, he is. So that means you'll see about two or three fumbles this week because he <laughs> cannot hold on to the ball. So. Yeah, well, um, I follow the Giants. Well, you, you know, uh, you know, I was just actually just thinking with the uh, Bears struggling, the Seahawks struggling, the Jets sucking, the Giants sucking. There's a possibility. The Jets and Giants could each have two picks in the top ten. Well, it is a possibility, and it, it's the way things are right now. They're both projected there, and the Bears have been on a downturn since, like, an okay start. And uh, the Giants have the Bears pick, obviously. So um, seems like a new GM will be making that pick. But uh, in the very least, the Giants need as many draft picks and, and impact players as possible moving forward. Because uh, of their, I saw this disaster. funny part soon. This funny cartoon, it was like the Dolphins go like uh, swarming the Giants, and Mike Lennon was drawn as a giraffe. Yeah, I saw that too. He was terrible, and I don't. And Mikey, I'm sure, has some words to say about Mike Lennon considering the contract he signed with the Bears and then only made about three starts. But he is the worst, one of the worst quarterbacks I've ever seen. And I don't understand how he's even in the league as a backup because he has no vision, he has no cube football IQ. Um, he basically was just throwing it into no man's land or into right into the chest of a defender. He just, he just is not a smart quarterback or football player. And he's absolutely yeah, terrible. Dolphins dropped about three or four interceptions. He's six yeah. two as a starter. And we signed him to a $17 million contract. Yep. I remember. It's the worst thing in the world. That guy has to be. That was the longest four-game stretch as a Bears fan, watching that guy play and be the starter. That was Suey season. I just wanted to end myself every single time I saw him get on the on the field. It was awful. You know he lives in the same city as me, right? He lives in Hoboken. Oh, he does. Give me his he address. Does. Um, his address. No, uh, my two two of my uh, my roommates they saw um, they saw him in the liquor store a couple weeks ago buying wine, and of course he didn't have to play the next day, but. Uh, Daniel Jones well, has a, uh, too, and a bunch of them, but and uh, Glennon is playing again this week, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, he has a concussion. I think Jake Fromm's going to start, which I Jake Fromm hasn't gotten a chance to play since he got drafted. Like obviously, was pretty uh, uh, Jake Fromm, Jake, Jake Fromm is <laughs> that's going to be another loss. Like cool. a shitty quarterback, Jake Fromm is there. He was once a promising prospect, and. I would just like to see what he has rather than Mike Glennon. Um, obviously, it's hard to learn well, the system. Uh, well, we got the fucking Georgia Bulldogs who, uh, who uh, whenever uh, Kirby Smart sees uh, uh, Nick Saban, he goes into fetal position and starts sucking his thumb like uh, uh, Henry Winkler in uh, The Water Boy. Oh, my God. The Giants have a ton of Georgia Bulldogs on their team. They have Fromm. They have Andrew Thomas. Isaiah Wilson, you know, uh, Delari. I'm calling conspiracy. I'm calling conspiracy. I honestly think Georgia threw that game to get two SEC teams into the, uh, the college football playoffs. You know what? I agree. I agree with that. I, I mean, Georgia doesn't that doesn't allow uh, more than uh, 17 points all season, and they're allowing the, 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 the Alabama's going up and down the field on them. Yeah. They played um, like shit. Yeah. Georgia's playing chess. We're playing checkers. And, and, and what you're going to see is Georgia's going to beat Michigan. Alabama's going to beat Cincinnati. And then Georgia's going to go to Alabama and go, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and, uh, Georgia's taking a knee. And they're <laughs> planning on checking down. 
It's the final score, 108 to 0. Thank you, Mr. Cody Sussley. This is the greatest coach ever. I can't beat him. <laughs> and then next year, uh, Alabama's going to play Georgia 11 times and win all 11 games. And Cody Sussley's going to go, he is my idol. Whatever he wants me to do, I'll be there for him. I'll be there for you. These five words I say to you when Alabama needs a win. We'll be there for them. Uh, I mean, Georgia football and choking. I mean, they had that championship in their hands. They choked like the friggin' Falcons. They Georgia football suck, choke, you ugga, you suck. I hope, I hope uh, Georgia Tech turns oh, things around so Georgia Tech can kick their ass every fucking year for the way Georgia played that fucking game on Saturday. Mm-hmm. It's garbage. Garbage. You knew Alabama was going to win. Like, that's what everyone wanted. Everyone wants them in the committee. Nobody wants, wants them. Everyone's uh, sick of Alabama. The NCAA want wants them in. Well, the NCAA is a bunch of fucking crooks. I mean, uh, Brian Kelly stabs Notre Dame in the back. You know, it would have been so funny if Notre Dame got in the playoff and actually fucking won. Yeah, which likely won't happen. You guys see Brian Kelly? That would have been funny. He developed that southern accent in like a day. Hello, welcome to the I guess it's Dana. Well, hello, oh, hello, love you. He, he, he sounded like Justin Wilson. I bet you guys are probably too young to remember Justin Wilson. And I'm not talking about the ex pitch, the Met, ex Met current Yankee pitcher. No. Who's Jeff Wilson? Justin Wilson. Justin Wilson um, was on uh, PBS. He had a cooking show, and he'd like sit out like in his backyard. Oh, all y'all down here, I'm guaranteed they're going to about to do it. I, you want to go go guarantee I'm going to be cooking up some crawled ads, you guarantee I'm going to be a good phone up some Louisiana hot sauce on there. Ooh, yeah, I'm going to go down there and guarantee you. It was reminds like me, the Cajun chef or something like Justin Wilson. Reminds me of the coach from uh, The Water Boy. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know what I'm talking about? I forgot the yeah. guy's name. Yeah, that's literally Coach O. Yeah, Coach yeah, O. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, look up, uh, look it up. The Cajun chef Justin Wilson was like, "Ooh, yeah, I'm gonna guarantee you, I'm going to go down, I'm going to guarantee, you, I'm gonna guarantee." You. I remember one time I'm gonna go down there and got a couple of Yankees coming down here, and even the Yankees don't like the Mexican cooking. Frank, why is there not an episode of Allow Me to Be Frank where you just talk like that for the full hour? <laughs> My God. No, he's, that might drive people to insane, you know. I guarantee that might be crazy. Don't yeah. enable him. Yeah, I can't enable him. I'm sorry. That would be <laughs> perfect, though. If I if I tuned in to allow me to be Frank and be like, hey, welcome to allow me to be Frank. Make my day. Make my week. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of this week and making every, somebody's week, uh, Frank. How are you feeling about Buck Walter potentially gaining some momentum towards becoming the Mets manager? I have my uh, trepidations about him, but uh, if people like uh, Scherzer want him, I think it'll be good. Uh, you know what I like, actually? Of all the news that's come out this offseason, is now we know how what a shitty manager Louis Rojas really was. Because everyone says, oh! Oh, everyone's the best of friends here. We're the best of friends everyone they ever had. We're the best of friends. <laughs> I mean, uh, everyone knew the rat raccoon story was bullshit. But now we found out actually what happened. Meanwhile, anyone that's a free agent is basically told, okay, yeah, see you later. Bye. They didn't really do they did, I mean, the fact that... Uh, the, I think if the Mets wanted to keep Marcus Stroman, Marcus Stroman would be gone, would be here. The Mets did not want to keep Marcus Stroman. I think that they basically said, this guy is this guy is a good pitcher, but you know what? He's a fucking headache. He's a, a fucking mental case. He fucking didn't screen, didn't skinned. I mean, I mean, and it, 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 this guy who is who like 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 a hair trigger blocks people, likes to tweet where someone is called a wop. Hate to see it. Yeah, which is why this morning uh, Boomer and Geo actually gave myself a shout out because uh, I reported on Scherzer, be, you know, wanting Buck Show Walter to be the Mets manager, and then uh, they were like, I guess looking through my bio on Twitter, and they go, "Oh wait, they go, he co-hosts a podcast with Frank the Tank." 
So that definitely Boomer goes. That definitely makes him legit. And uh, I was I was dying at that because I know Boomer and Geo know Frank and have had him on before and have talked to him. And then also I lost it when uh, Geo goes. They're talking about my last name because obviously it's very Italian. And and Geo goes, yeah, well he's Italian, so you know Marcus Stroman wouldn't like him. Oh. <laughs> Marcus Stroman and Marcus Stroman did not like him. Yeah, Marcus Stroman blocked me, as I know he blocked everybody on this podcast too. Yeah, well, then that's got to be for sure because we're all oh, it's, like a, it's like that song. Yeah. It's like that song. Block by zero. <laughs> you know, uh, you guys, the Cubs, uh, you're getting uh, – by the way, Mikey, you will be blocked by Memorial Day. I'm already He's blocked. Guaranteed. He's already blocked. I, I – <laughs> remember that? I defended your honor at Gene and Jude's. I was, like, talking shit to the guy. And literally, it was probably about two minutes after the tweet, I was blocked. And I was like, dude. I mean, he needs to either get off the Twitter or create a burner account and just hide. Because he, he, I mean, he he actually looks up his mansions. And if they say anything critical about him, block, 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 block. I mean, uh, I mean, he might lead the league. He might lead the world in blocked people on Twitter. He's Wait, definitely uh, he he definitely reads his name, and I would wouldn't be shocked if he had multiple burner accounts. Um, Do you remember? Uh, it was actually the day you got blocked when he uh, did, when he he got the loss. He didn't pitch well. He pitched didn't pitch badly. Well, well, he, he pitched. Won. Frank, to be fair, he did. He pitched in the eighth inning, give up three runs. They lost like three to two. Like he pitched pretty well through like a hundred oh, yeah. pitches. But, but he wasn't instead of wanting to put a cap in the ass of someone, his offense, which is I would have actually liked to see him do, get pissed off at his offense. He uh, he tweeted from multi, like 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 his highlight multiple times. Yeah, like nine times, and uh, he also stormed off the press conference with us and said that uh, he goes, "Man, I'm done answering these guys' questions." And uh, then that's I, – I tweeted that out, transcribed what he said, and he blocked me for it. When I did have a good relationship with him to start the season, I did an interview with him. And, you know, he was always actually okay to me on, on Zoom and in person. And, uh, yeah, then after that he blocked me, and then that was about it. And um, he was never coming back, and they didn't want him back. And, of course, his behavior on Twitter the last couple of weeks has been pretty um, – pretty ridiculous and it really hurt his market because the rebuilding Cubs were the only team who threw him money and he didn't even get the, he got the money that I guess he was looking for, but he didn't get the length. Like a lot of the agents and executives around the league thought he was going to get a five to six year deal and he just didn't. And, uh, no one really no, was interested. And, in and, uh, and I think he, I think I, I don't think they want to deal with him. It's a locker room. And then he started, and it, and then he started talking about uh, the match going after Gaussman and Ray. And, well, what about me? I, I, that makes him look weak. Yeah. It doesn't make him look good. You, you, you keep everything – you got to keep your cards close to the vest. I mean, that's like – like you uh, you got to keep it close to the vest. I mean uh, – Well, at least you guys got – uh, He's on our team now. It sucks. Yeah, Mikey. And you fun. also got – you also have you got Clint Frazier, who is is like like uh, unloading on the Yankees. Yeah, terrible. Yeah. You, you hear him talk about the idea? Uh, talk about the Yankees? It felt like uh, I was in a pr- basically he's basically said I was in a prison. Goodbye, goodbye, Razor. I could actually be myself again. I could. Uh, the, the, he says that the, the the Yankees rules. He basically is saying that the Yankees rules constricted him as a ball player and made it impossible for him to be. Uh, to flourish. Well, he said that he never, he didn't get like a chance to really play with the Yankees, which is true. He's right. So. Yeah. Well, the Yankees couldn't stand his attitude. Yeah, which is true. And and I've he heard was, stories from. He's uh, a head case. Inside the clubhouse, I heard he was like a dick to the reporters and to the beat. Like he just would like interfere whenever they'd be like trying to ask anyone else questions. He like was kind well, of an the, asshole the, to the them. Yankees should, the Yankees should have known about him. When he asked for number seven, and when he said, well, that's Mickey Mantle's number. And he says, well, he's dead. What's he need with that number now? <laughs> yeah. yeah, he did. Yes. 
dude. No fucking respect. Like, I don't understand. I, I don't understand how these players think because they, when do these players, these type of personalities ever last in the league? Like, when? Uh, and, and that's, well, that's why Clint Fraser's career is, is basically fizzling. The yeah. Yankees, the Yankees space, the Yankees, they, the Yankees didn't lose him. They dumped his ass. They non-tendered him. It's like Ben Wallace and uh, Gordon's number. Clint Frazier had vertigo. He has concussion issues, and he had vertigo last year. So at that point, they were just like, all right, it's not, you know, we're moving on from him. Uh, he's no longer in our future plans. And it kind of just happened so fast. Um, and, yeah, yeah those, they, they non-tendered him. Those trades that Brian Cashman yeah. pulled off at the 2016 deadline, which he was called a genius for, um, I mean, the only one who they still have left is Glaber Torres, who – has had he hasn't been Glaber Torres since 2019, and we know he's awful defensively, especially at shortstop. Do the Yankees plan on resigning Rizzo? Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah. to get Matt Olson, the A's first baseman, they'd have to give up so much, and yeah. I just think Rizzo would be the easiest to resign. Um, on the other hand, there's two of the top shortstops left. <laughs> They're in need of a shortstop, but they don't want to block Volp or. Oswald Peraza, their top shortstop prospects. So <laughs> there's rumors that they might go after Aldrington Simmons or uh, the shortstop from the A's or the uh, Rangers, who now is going to play third. <laughs> Kiner, Falala, his name is Isaiah Fala, Kiner. I, I don't know. I, I can't pronounce his name, but that's all. I think the Yankees are the Yankees. If they don't have a good offseason, I, I think they're one year away of imploding as a franchise. Where they have like one of those years where they lose ninety games, and that would that and and I actually think they need that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is Brian Cashman's contract year, so um, going to the playoffs this year did them did them no favors. No, it didn't. It was such a weird year, such a streaky year. They look like. A mess at times, even in September, and then they were hot at times. And really, they had a lot of deficiencies, and they're going to have to be aggressive when they come out of the gate. But uh, one of the reasons they're not going to sign Correa, I heard, and potentially not Story, is because Aaron Judge needs an extension. And they're so hamstrung by Garrett Cole's contract, um, you know, obviously LeMahieu. Uh, you know, it's just they don't have the and, money that and, they used to. And, and Giancarlo Stanton, Giancarlo Stanton, Giancarlo Stanton. Is, is a yeah, you, you know it's it's almost like uh, uh, some fifty years ago or sixty years ago, probably now, at a hospital there was a uh, the a fiasco. Uh, Steinberg's son, Steinberg's son, ended up going to the Cohen family. Uh, oh, another Wilpon son ended up going to the Steinberg family, and who knows where the other kid is, but. It's almost like Hal is a will pond. Yeah, right. It does seem like he's operating like one at this point. And what are they going to do when Cashman leaves, if Cashman leaves after next year? I mean, if they don't have a winning team again, if they're not back I, to their ways. I think, I, I think they need a new general manager. I think uh, that Cashman's gotten awful stale down there. And the Yankees, are, the Yankees aren't bad or stale. Yeah, they're in purgatory. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it's a, that's why they keep in the, we're uh, barely edging into the playoffs, and and yeah, they're, they're, they're a stale organization, a stale, boring organization. Yeah, and, and if they don't sign Anthony Rizzo, shame on them. He is everything a Yankee is meant to be. He's got the North Jersey roots. He's got the uh, the, the the Yankee like swagger. I mean, they make uh, they make lemon ice, uh, a special Anthony Rizzo lemon ice in Lindhurst, New Jersey, at the Lindhurst uh, pastry shop. That's made of uh, vanilla and co and uh, cano no chocolate and uh, cannoli cream. Lemon ice of uh, chocolate that's got like flavored of uh, chocolate flavor and lemon and uh, cannoli cream flavor. That sounds delicious. Yeah, I'm gonna have to try that next time I come out. Rizzo wasn't, uh, he wasn't like a star for the Yankees when they got him, but he wasn't, uh, you know, he wasn't terrible. He was solid. Uh, I know he was dealing with a back injury last year that he played through. So if healthy, I think maybe like a three-year yeah, good for him. Watch the, 
do, do they have Joey Gallo still with them, don't they? They He's do. Not even a free agent, is he? For another year, and they don't want. They are fielding trading. <laughs> They're trying to shop him around, and no one wants. Him. Frank, did you say Joey, Joey Gallo at first? Or Joey Gallo? Joey Gallo or Joey Gallo? <laughs> oh, it's Joey Gallo. I thought you said Joey Gallo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Joey Gallo will lead the. Uh, Joey Gallo and Giancarlo Stanton, if they play in the field, will lead the league in that uh, errors. And, and, and the Yankees have like like no range anywhere. I did. They are. They, they, is is if Garrett Cole has is, is out for two months, like uh, Jacob Degrom is. That team will that team will hit the skids fast. Their bullpen is is old. Chapman doesn't is lost a lot on his fastball. The, the Yankees are set up for a major failure. Well, beyond Cole, who, you know, the Yankees really could use a number two starter, and they don't have one. And frankly, I guess Jordan Montgomery, you could say, is their number three. Nestor Cortez emerged. But is he going to be – when is the league going to figure him out, and can he adjust back once they do? And, uh, you know, Jameson Tyone's coming back in, like, mid to late April. You know, he just got surgery and is always a health question mark. And they're just – there's the holes on offense. There's holes on defense. The Yankees just have this attitude that we're the Yankees. We can do anything we want. Well, they don't spend say- and operate like that anymore, though. That's the thing. Cohen has now emerged as George Steinbrenner-esque, which we heard he was like, and he was, you know, failed to resemble that in the first year. But now he's done it after Rob Martin and Steven Matz pissed him off on Thanksgiving Eve. And uh, now he's looking like that. He's still on the back page away from the Yankees. Still want another uh, pitcher. Still want another uh, hitter. And yeah. they, and and they definitely make some good trades. I think. So would you guys think this is the new era, like a trade or not a trade? The new era where the the Mets are on top of the Yankees in New York. Um, the think? Mets need the Mets need to finish the job, but I don't think that you spend two hundred. You don't commit two hundred fifty four point five million dollars if you're only going to half ass it in an off season. I mean, their payroll is up to 264 million. Like you don't, you don't do this to stop, you know, where you are because they still need to add. I I actually live through that era when the Mets were on top of the Yankees. In the eighties. Yep. That's great. And George Steinbrenner was fit to be tied. He refused to play the Mets. and He actually refused to play the Mets in spring training. He cut off the Mets for seven years when the Mets got good because he he refused to even play him in spring training. He refused to even like 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 and 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 he was fuming. He this is when he was going. He, he was finding a manager every year at, at, at during this part. I mean, uh, it was, he fired uh, Yogi Berra fifteen games into the eighty uh, five season with Ricky Henderson missing the first uh, three weeks. And acting Great. like like uh, and, and each time you try to bring back Billy Martin, Billy Martin. This is when Billy Martin was was the manager five times. Meanwhile, Billy Martin is is a is a is a raging alcoholic and needed help. And the George Simon giving him the jobs wasn't the help he needed. I mean, it, it, uh, and to tell you how obsessed George was with the teams. Count how many 86 Mets ended up playing for the Yankees. Doc Gooden, Daryl Strawberry, um, David Cohn. Oh, Cohn was from it. Cohn came up in 87, but uh, he was part of that era at least. Um, Strawberry, Gooden, Ojeda. Did Jesse Orozco play for them? Briefly. Briefly. Um, Yeah, Jesse Orozco, but he played for a lot of teams. Yeah, I knew that. All right. Well, on that note, Frank, um, I think we got to roll into Ask the Tank. We actually only got one question this week, um, but we're running out of time. I know I know you're going to the Devils game. I know everybody's everybody's got a busy day and uh, the rare afternoon show for allowing me to be frank this week. So Skippy, Jason Jones, Gilnard the third. That's a hell of a handle right there. Wants to know, Frank, do you think you could eat four hot dogs every day for an entire year? Probably I could do it, but I wouldn't want to do it on Thanksgiving. I mean, come on, I want to turkey. 
Oh my God. Yeah. Not even pigs in a blanket. Or well, maybe a little, a couple of pigs in a blanket <laughs> as a garnish. That's what I thought. But uh, all right. Well, thanks to everybody for listening. Of course, Mikey, thank you for joining the show. We're looking forward to having you on moving forward. Uh, follow Frank at NJTank99. Follow myself at Regazza Report. Follow the account at Frank the Tank Pod. And Mikey, you're at Mikey Betts, or what's, what's your handle? At, at Real Mikey Betts. At Real Mikey Betts. So give us all a follow. Remember to rate, download, review, and subscribe. And Frank, either if you have a song in mind today that you would like to sing, or if you have a jingle, jingle for the outro, by all means, take it away. Pigs in the blanket, do da do ba. Pigs in the blanket, do ba do. Get a hot dog, get some cheese, wrap it in a pastry. Pigs in the blanket, do ba do ba. Pigs in the blanket, do ba do. If you feeling adventurous, get some bacon, add it to. Pigs in the blanket, do ba do ba. Pigs in the blanket, do ba do. And if you want it to taste good, make sure it's felt mince hot dogs for you. Click like, subscribe. See you next week. See you next week.